Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to start a fire using a ferrocium rod. So stay tuned and let's get right into the video. And welcome back. So yes, like I said in the uh, introduction, I'm going to show you how to start a fire using a ferrocium rod. But before I do, as per the usual, I got to ask you to go down and hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you ring that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. And hit me into those comments. If you like these kind of videos and you like this kind of content, let me know so I can continue to do more of it. All right, starting fire with a ferrocium rod. This was actually the request of a subscriber. He said he's tried starting fires with a ferrocium rod before and uh, had not had good success with it and suggested that maybe I do a video on how to do it. Now I have started fires with ferrocium rods before. Uh, I'm not a survivalist. I have not been to survival schools and things like that, but I have used ferrocium rods before and it is very possible to get a fire started using a ferrocium rod. So back in the old days, they used to use flint and steel, and you can get a fire going with flint and steel, but I'm here to tell you, ferrocium is much more effective. What is ferrocium? It's a metal. Uh, it acts a lot like aluminum in many ways. It feels about the same weight. It's got about the same density, things like that. It uh, machines and mills and drills kind of like aluminum. The difference is, is when you add a lot of friction to ferrocium, it'll make sparks, and it'll make really hot sparks. Comparing to flint and steel, ferrocium is much hotter, will produce much more sparks, and will actually burn longer. When you scrape off the ferrocium, the little shards of metal that you're scraping off and igniting will actually burn longer than flint and steel will, thus giving you a better opportunity to build a fire. So when it comes to using a ferrocium rod, uh, there are three key things, in my opinion, that really lend itself well to making ferrocium work for you. Uh, first and foremost is the size of the rod that matters. And if she told you size doesn't matter, she lied. A larger ferrocium rod is much easier to work with than, say, a smaller one. Now, I've got a couple of ferrocium rods here that I've bought, and you can buy these on Amazon pretty reasonably. Uh, you can buy some pretty small, compact ones. This one's about three and a half, four inches long, and it's uh, five sixteenths in diameter, and it does work. But what I find is that the larger ferrocium rods are much easier to hang on to and much easier to handle. And that becomes important because when it comes to using a ferrocium rod, the second key is pressure. You have to put, uh, exert a large amount of pressure when you're scraping the ferrocium rod to make those sparks. The more pressure you can exert, the better you're going to have to get good sparks to make a fire. And you want to have as long of a stroke on the ferrocium rod as possible so you can shave off a lot of those shards at one time, getting more sparks on your tinder material to get it going. So I always like to buy the largest ferrocium rod that I can. Now these do work. You can get a fire started, but it just will take a little more time and effort to do so. And I'll demonstrate with all of them so that you can see that they do work. Now... These ferrocium rods here, uh, I bought them on Amazon, and I'll put all the description links in the description down below. They're uh, five inches long, and they don't come with handles, but it, they do come with holes drilled in them, so you can kind of attach your own handle, and I've done that here. With this one, I just attached a braided 550 cord with a piece of deer antler on it just to make it kind of pretty. This one, I actually attached a deer antler to it like a knife handle, if you will. I put a brass pin in it right there. Uh, to hold the ferrocium in place because remember it does drill and act a lot like aluminum. The difference is, is if you are drilling ferrocium, be very, very careful because if it gets too hot, the shavings that you drill off will actually ignite and so be prepared for that. Uh, have a fire extinguisher ready because they're quite hot and they burn very readily. Uh, but you can see this one, like I said, I put a, a deer antler uh, on it for a nice handle. And I've started fire with these ferrocium rods, uh, and they do work really, really well. 
these two ferrous CM rods here, I bought both of these on Amazon and well. Uh, this one, uh, it just came with one ferrous CM rod. It's got a wooden handle on it and it actually gives you a little fire striker. Uh, if you don't have a knife or a hatchet with you, it's kind of a, an all-in-one package here. These ferrous CM rods were very inexpensive. Uh, they also come with a fire striker. And like I said, I'll put all the links in the description down below. Uh, they're just a little bit longer and they have a very small rudimentary plastic handle on them, but they both work. So you can get fire started with all of these. I'm gonna use one of the larger ones just so it shows up better on camera, but I will, I will start a fire with all these ferrous CM rods. And finally, the third thing that I think is pretty key to a ferrous CM rod actually working for you is your tinder material. You have to have a material that is readily willing to take a spark to ignite it into flame. If you don't have good tinder, you are not going to have good success with your ferrous CM rod. Now, what do I use for tinder? Any number of things. Uh, cotton ball soaked in petroleum jelly. A great way to start a fire with a ferrous CM rod. Readily takes a spark burns for a good long period of time, lets you get that fire going. Cotton balls work really, really well. Uh, paper towels and toilet paper really take a spark exceedingly well, but what they also do is they burn really, really fast. So it's, it's like using cattail. Cattail also works really well, but we'll talk that about that later. I call that a flash tinder. It really doesn't, it doesn't burn for very long and it doesn't give you a whole lot of opportunity to get a fire going. Uh, having petroleum jelly, you can add petroleum jelly to just about anything that burns to extend its life and length of how long it burns to include paper towels. So have uh, petroleum jelly, Carmex in the tube, the lip balm stuff, that burns exceedingly well. You can use that as to help uh, offset your tinder. If you find an old bird's nest in the woods, uh, this is really dry grass. And if you take this bird's nest and you, and you break it up a little bit and you get the crap and the dirt out of it and you're just left with this exceedingly dry grass it takes a takes a spark quite well you add a cotton ball to this and you can get a fire going very very easily birch bark uh, you can see behind me here i have uh, birch trees all over the place if you live in an area of the world that's got birch bark birch bark actually takes a spark well it doesn't take a spark well in this condition you have to take it and kind of process it down work it and get those fibers exposed and and really just kind of break it up so the smaller the pieces you have the more likely that that material is going to take a spark and so you want to get that down into a really fibrous material and get it on your starter board so that you have a a good place for it to go ahead and take a spark birch bark works exceedingly well and then if you're using cotton balls, having birch bark at the ready once you get the fire started with a cotton ball will also help you make your fire. All right, so now that we've talked about all that, let's go ahead and let's move the camera closer to my starter board here and let's actually light a fire with a ferrous CM rod. All right, so right off the bat, uh, I gotta apologize. It's a bright sunny day. It's actually beautiful out here. It's about 25 degrees. There isn't a stitch of wind and Unfortunately, the sun is not going to be very conducive to showing you the sparks, but I, I think we can get this done. Uh, I have to take what I get as far as weather is concerned. So part of having your ferrous CM rod or starting a fire with a rod is to make sure you have plenty of sticks and twigs to get that fire going once you have gotten your tinder to take a spark or your fire starter. So just have a bunch of... Uh, small sticks at the ready so you can have a good fire lay once you get that flame going so the very second that you get your cotton balls or whatever it is you're using for tinder in a flame you can go ahead and add stuff like this right to it so that you can start actually instituting a flame using some good fuel source wood so let's do uh let's do the easiest one first we're going to use a cotton ball uh, dipped in vaseline uh, I made these up ahead of time, and you can do that. Just stip, stick them in a Ziploc bag. They'll make your make your fingers uh, nice and soft as well. So go ahead and you just take a cotton ball, kind of pull it apart. You don't want it bunched up. You want to expose a lot of those fibers. Go ahead and lay it on your starter board. Now there's there's a couple of different ways you can do a ferrous CM rod. Now the first thing, you can see that all these ferrous CM rods have got paint on them. 
you're gonna to wanna to scrape that paint off because you can't start these parks through the sparks through the paint. And then you can either use a knife or if you have a Ferris CM rod that comes with a striker, you can use the striker that they give you. Uh, all will work really well. You just need some kind of a sharp edge of steel and these strikers actually work pretty good. If you've got a 90 degree spine on your knife, that works really good. If your 90 degree spine on your knife is a little subject, you can actually use the cutting edge as well. Just understand you're gonna dull the blade. I kind of do that as a last resort. The other thing you can use is you can use the cutting edge of your hatchet and that will also make sparks with your ferro seam rod and that actually does a really good job of it. Uh, again, kind of awkward and cumbersome, but you can get it done. The other nice thing about ferrocium is it'll actually start or make sparks when it's wet. So if it's a wet, damp condition, you can get you can get sparks on your ferrocium rod. So a couple of ways to do this: you can either take your ferrocium rod and you can put it right on the material that you're trying to start and push down with it and then scrape on it. Or another option is to get your boot really close, put your knife blade down, and actually push against your toe of your boot and then scrape the ferrocium away from you or towards you away from the fire and shower that tinder material with sparks. Both those methods work. I prefer to hold the material down with my ferrocium rod and then scrape with my knife because then what it does is it doesn't, the, the material, the fire starting material isn't as likely to move around or get pushed off or something like that. It just really seems to work well. And then just take and you hold your spot, hold your knife and you get a good, get a good scraping edge on your spine, put a lot of pressure on it and just scrape down and make a spark. There you go. Fire, we have fire. Then you can add some grass or little bit of birch bark and you've got flame. All right, so now let's uh, let's try it with a piece of paper towel, something people usually have laying around. Uh, doesn't matter what paper towel you have. If you're going to use Kleenexes, uh, use Kleenex that doesn't have lotion in it. Uh, that doesn't seem to start quite as well. But just go ahead and take a paper towel and if it's multi-ply a lot of times if you take and get those plies separated that will that will help your cause if it's even possible some of them will some of them won't there we go so separate those plies make that paper even thinner and then kind of ball it up make a little Make a little pocket for the ferrocium rod to kind of catch its sparks. And let's use one of these, let's use one of these uh, cheaper ferrocium rods I got on Amazon, one of these smaller ones. Let's see how that works. Again, have the paint scraped off. They give you a little scraper here. Pressure, as much pressure as you can afford. There it goes, it's lit. A little bit of birch bark. And there's a fire. All right, now I got a little bit of paper birch here, or birch, uh, this is called white birch, paper birch, any kind of number of things, but it's birch. And it grows on these trees and you want the, you want the light stuffy fluff that's kind of shedding on its own is, is so you can just peel it off by hand. And then you take it and kind of rub it together and make it extremely fibrous, really break it up, get a good ball going in there. Let's take that same, uh, same rod we used before. There's a fire. You've got flame. So now once I've got that fire going, I can go ahead and I can I can add a little bit of larger birch bark to it if I want to. A 
really try to get it going. Then I can add my sticks to it, and now I'm really going to have some fire. And there you have it, starting a fire with a ferrocium rod. It's not hard and it's not difficult. You just have to remember, large rod, a lot of pressure, get those sparks really close to the, to the tinder, and then have a tinder that can readily take a spark and you should be able to light a fire every time. But it's all about the pressure in my opinion. The more pressure, the, the more sparks that you can make and the heavier sparks that you can get and the more likely those sparks are to actually light a fire for you. And that's the video for this week, starting a fire using a ferrocium rod. Now, if you're liking this kind of content and you like these kind of videos, make sure you go down and hit that like and subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and let me know in the comments if you like this kind of content and I will continue to do more of it. With that, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. This is Ed with Jack of All Trades. As always, thank you to my longtime subscribers. Thank you to everybody who watches these videos, and we will see you on the next video.